Hey folks, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill. This is my shop. We're building an LBSC Titch locomotive. This is what the locomotive looks like. It's a tiny little thing compared to my big one. This is a three and a half inch gauge, means the distance between the rails that, that the, uh, the locomotive will roll on. So this week's episode, we were finished up on this, well, t tilt it down, you can see what I'm talking about. We have finished up on the steam chests here, and we made the nuts for the valves, and the valve spindles, and the little clevises that go on the end there. It was a lot of fun machining it, really happy with how things have come out generally. <laughs> However, I will say, one thing I'm not happy with is the valve spindles themselves, which are part of this episode. So. I think I have the basic technique, but I'm going to blame this on the materials. This stainless was just really tough to um, to work. And I put a little, a couple of kinks in the threaded portion, and I think I know a better way to do it. So I'm going to order some. I need to order fasteners from McMaster Car anyway, so I'm going to order that. But you can see that it's looking really good. I mean, the, here's the the valve covers. I made some little studs, little eighth inch studs that are threaded 540 here. That the spindle covers go over and this will be really handy for actually setting the timing of the locomotive you know because because you can see as we move it through we'll be able to see where and twist this to adjust the actual where the valve is compared to the the rod there so we'll go into that in further detail later but if you would please sit back and enjoy this will probably be about a half hour episode 20 25 minutes maybe um, hopefully it's enjoyable to you, and we'll keep you posted as we go along. Thanks again for all the nice comments. If you have a question, please ask. I'll do my best to answer. And if you just you don't have a question, but you wanted to tell me that you uh, let me know that somebody watched it and appreciated me putting this together, just hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit that bell for the updates. So I try to post every week or so as... as um, life and time and job and yard work and all that permit the shop time so i hope it's enjoyable to you thanks for joining me on this journey and have a great week thanks everybody most of the work on the steam chest covers is going to be done on the milling machine obviously just milling the edges to size and then drilling the holes but i thought i'd go ahead and try the, the method that they recommend in the book because these little blanks that i bought have these beautiful little cast iron or cast in little studs that you can use in your three or four jaw chuck. So I've got this thing teed up. I just finished machining this one. I used a regular high speed steel um, sharp cutter and I'll go ahead and machine this one down too. I only took, end up, took off about 20 thousandths just to, um, to clean it up but I thought having this perfectly flat surface it will make it a lot easier when I actually get it into the mill and start to you know, mill the edges and, and hold it down. So it's a good way to start. I do love the automatic feed feature on the lathe. That's what I've got going on now. I set it for the, um, the Z axis is at zero. I set it for about a 10 thou cut. And it's just stirring now. It's an interrupted cut, obviously, because it's not a circular part. Show you the whole thing, but the feed is pretty slow. And it gave that exemplary a nice finish before. I'll bring it back when this one's done or on its finishing pass. Well, that didn't take but a minute, <clears throat> so beautiful finish there, and I'll highly recommend that. And take it over to the mill and do the next machine. Okay, here we are machining the steam chest covers a little bit. It, I had them, I tipped them up on end and had the little nub here and I had a parallel here to set them on to trim the, the distance for the long ways. And now I'm just, I've got it, as you can see in the soft dock, just cleaning up, I'm going to take off about 30 thou on either side to get to the right width. I measured it. This is the second one. And I'm just doing about 6 thou at a time or so. 6 or 7 thou. 
very light because I don't want to knock the piece out of the little soft gauze there. And also notice that when I'm doing the climb mill, I'm not, not cutting anything because the climb would have a tendency to push it up and out. So we don't want to do that. And here's the cover, steam chest cover for the steam chest. This is the one that I had to heat up and repair yesterday. So fits nicely. It'll help dress it up. The little nub, instead of you know cutting that off flush or milling it down flat, I, I thought they looked kind of cool. So I milled them down to 150 thou tall on both sides. And I'm going to leave it that way. If you'll see like the the Allen Mogul, it has a little boss there in, the, in that steam chest, and that's for the oiler. Now the LBSC Titch, the oil comes through in a different way into the steam supply, so I don't need those, but I just thought it looks kind of cool, it looks somewhat authentic, so I'm going to leave it there. And uh, maybe, who knows, it could come in handy if I ever needed to, to uh, you know, put something on there, a snifter or whatever. That's what this looks like, a little snifter. Although this, the locomotive doesn't have snifters either. So the next step, I was thinking about milling a little step in here to kind of help with the ceiling because this is, the casting is still thicker than it needs to be. It only needs to be an eighth of an inch. So let's think about just milling out a little groove, so to speak, so, it, uh, so the um, cylinder covers will fit, you know, kind of have a a box lid type fit, if you will. Okay, here's what I mean. I marked out, I'm just going to go down like 20 thou just to create a little kind of a rim there. So it's quarter inch wide on three sides and three sixteenths on the other. Okay, here's what I was talking about. Just a little 20 thou rim there in the steam chests and just gives it a nice little bit of a box fit. This one's a little loose for some reason. I um, guess I rushed it. This one's a pretty good fit here on the one that I had to repair. So anyway, next up will be to drill the holes. As you may recall, I just have tapping size holes in here right now in the steam chests. And of course, I won't really need tapping size holes in these things. Just full size for the 540 and 38, 348 screws. So we'll do that next. Okay, here's the first of the two steam chests with the uh, clearance hole. Well, not these are not the clearance holes. Sorry about that. These are the tapping size holes. So number 38 and number 47. And this is the one that went through the blacksmith routine, getting it straightened back out again. So it's looking a little bit better and better. Uh, a little bit more filing when the uh, the uh, cover is all set. It should be good to go. So pretty happy about how it's come out so far. I've just set this in the in the mill, as you can see, and you can hear the rotary phase converter winding its head off there. But I just I lined these up by eyeball. I was going to do them according to the DRO, but uh, LBSC in his book says not to bother. He didn't talk about crazy glue, but I love this stuff and it's worked out good. So I've got the other one drying, ready to get drilled out next. So I'll uh, pop that up and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the second one done. This is the small, the tapping size, number 47 I think was the tapping size hole for the number 348 screws. So I got that done all the way through. Let's see what the opposite side. This is the nice one that I didn't mess up. and didn't have to go through the blacksmith repair routine so it looks good I've got to do some filing and deburring I can set it right in here and use this my little soft jaws that have the machined ledge in them it's a nice holding place go ahead and do some preliminary filing and deburring before I take the cover off aren't they pretty there's the two steam chests done with the holes drilled deburred a little bit of filing done on the outside and um, now I'm get the heat gun out and <laughs> release the crazy glue so I, I can take the tops off. All right, I'm preparing for the next step, which will be to super glue the steam chests in position so that I can put them in the mill vise and then drill and tap the holes. So before I do that, I wanted to point out a couple of things. Number one, uh, this, this, sorry about that. 
This one I've cleaned off. I've used some acetone here and haven't used the super glue yet, but acetone and a single edge razor blade to scrape the surfaces to get all the dried crazy glue off of these surfaces. <clears throat> Show you what it looks like when it hasn't been done. You can see all the, the crazy glue that's left stuck on that and on this piece. So use acetone to clear those off and then also for the part that hasn't been glued yet. And while I'm talking about that, the idea with the, the, the book does not have the exact dimensions of the, the holes in it for the steam chest. It's pretty obvious. Um, and obviously these two are the smaller size and the main reason you can tell is because of the thinner web here. The other point is where the screws go down, you, most places you don't have to worry about them interfering with the steam passages, but you would if they were directly below here. So that's why they're offset a little bit. And the other, this one, there's on each side, there's maybe one that comes somewhat close. So you would just want to make sure that you don't drill down too deeply to go into the steam passages. I'm shooting for probably 200 thou for the depth of each of them, which should be more than enough because I've got um, 540 regular taper taps and um, the, the, the end tap, bottom tap, that's what I was looking for. So anyway, I've got it all cleaned off now. I'm going to put some gloves on just so I don't get crazy glue all over my hands. And then I'll carefully crazy glue this together. And if I don't get the alignment perfectly, I'll heat it up and take it off and do it over again. Because the alignment really needs to be perfect for the valve rod to be in alignment with the piston axis of travel there. So here's a little setup I came up with. I have this little palm grin adjustable vise that I've got clamped to a work bench here. I've used it a lot if you've noticed in my filing videos. I really really like it. It's a small thing. It's handy. You can move it around wherever you need. So I put some shim brass shim stock to protect the cylinder faces. Put it on either side. Then I used a small C-clamp with a nice piece of cold rolled steel clamped up against the outer edge there. And my light is going wacky. But <clears throat> so I had a good surface. All I had to do was put the crazy glue this time I'm using the Duro Super, Super Glue. Sometimes I use rec, actual crazy brand crazy glue. But I put it on the clean surface on the opposite side, obviously. And then, because I had the backstop there, all I had to do was get it in place. I could slide it directly down, and I just had to line it up fore and aft. I was able to do that with my gloved fingers here really easily. And it's stuck in place for a good minute or so. So now I can take this one out set it aside and I'll bring back and get the other one set up for the other side and um, then I can drill and tap tomorrow. Yay. And here's the left hand cylinder in place. Obviously I just reversed the setup there. I cleaned everything off again with the acetone and pressed it down and it's in the exact right spot. So really pleased about how this is coming together. Here's a better view of the cemented product you can see the alignment is perfect. Really, really happy about that. That's the left hand one that didn't get abused and have to get through the blacksmith fixing routine. So I'll <clears throat> set it down. Here's the right hand one that did get abused and had to go through the blacksmith fixing routine. But as you can see, it's cemented perfectly in position as well. And I think it's going to be great. So we'll get those holes drilled and tapped tomorrow. I'll bring you along for that. Okay, I've gone ahead and gone around and drilled out all the holes for the tapping size using the steam chest as a guide. I was going to tap the holes and then put a couple of bolts in there or machine screws to hold it down and, and keep it from moving around. But actually, I tried that on the opposite one and it, it ended up breaking the the steam chest loose from the cylinder so I've re-glued it and it's drying and I decided to do this one and just go ahead and try to do it gently and not have any side forces on the steam chest and see if I could get the um, get the thing to go and it sure did so I've got the tapping size for the 540s on all the big holes here and then for the 348 on the little holes now what I think I'm going to do that worked so well I do need to 
drill out all these holes to the clearance size. So I'm actually going to do that now while this thing is set in its place and um, we'll finish the this one and go on to the next. Well, okay, that little change of plans. I got four of the large holes drilled out here in the um, good steam chest, the one that didn't go through the blacksmith routine. And then on the fourth one there, the drill caught and it spun spun the thing loose so I didn't at least I don't have to worry about heating that up to you to uh, melt the crazy glue to separate it <laughs> but I figured well since I had the part in the vise and it was all perfectly level and and uh, had the DRO oriented and everything what I would do is go ahead and do the tapping of all the holes separately so that's why you see the tap I've just finished the second of the 348 taps of the two 348 taps all the rest of them are 540 and I didn't didn't even bother with the bottoming tap just now I just figured I'd start it I can finish them with the bottom tap in the other um, you know in the tapping uh, the pillar tool <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do is we're kind of running late tonight so at least I've got all the taps started all they need to do is be finished with the bottoming tap I can easily do that in the pillar tool but uh, before I pack it in for tonight, I'll go ahead and finish drilling four more of the large clearance holes for the um, 540 screws and the two clearance holes for the 348. All right, that worked out good. Just finished drilling the second clearance hole for the 348, and I got all the clearance holes for the 540s in there. So it can take that part out. It was handy to have it in the mill with the DRO. Love to use this thing and helps keep me on track. All right, just finishing up the uh, bottoming taps for the, this is the 348 holes. I got my 540 bottoming tap there. Using it in the little shaper vise inside the pillar tool, which I am so glad I built. This thing has come in handy over and over again. So basically one, one cylinder works, mach, uh, machining and tapping and all that is done for tonight. I'll get to the other one tomorrow. Hey, welcome back everybody. Well, it's the next night and I have the pleasure of saying that I'm really thrilled at how these came out. The steam chests and all line up just perfectly. And here's a, here's a shot of the opposite steam chest. This is the one that went through the blacksmith routine to get it restored to life and it came out great. Very excited about that. Here I've got some 540 button head screws in here and a couple of little uh, Phillips head 348s and it looks pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to use that or these longer um, socket head cap screws. We'll see. This is the kind I use on my Allen Mogul over there. I think for the time being, the next thing I'm going to do or pretty soon, I'll make some studs out of eighth inch steel that are threaded 540 on both ends that I can use to temporarily hold the steam chests in place and um, it'll be handy for setting the valves that to have access inside here <clears throat> and then we can set the valves and the timing and all that stuff and then I can put the put the cover on and hold it down with some nuts and then replace it as need be so anyway we'll see how that goes the next next steps will be to take a piece of this 5 30 second stainless and thread the end and make a clevis for the opposite end that'll go in here there's the the valves are already made they came made with the set that I bought I think they're just fine so I'll need to make some nuts that go across and I'll uh, I'll bring you along for those steps as well but making good progress here and really thrilled with how things came out Okay, the next step in the process is making some spindles for the valves and I've got the same 532nd inch diameter stainless steel that I used for the pistons and it's very tough stuff. I don't know what alloy it is but it's very tough so I'm taking my time. I've already threaded this portion 532nd by 40 on both of them and I, I um, went ahead and I did that using a threading tool in the lathe first to get it almost to the finished di dimensions and then followed up with a threading die and a tailstock die holder. Same thing for this portion here which was turned down to an eighth of an inch in diameter and then threaded with the lathe and then 
the threads kind of as a thread forming measure basically used actually a couple of tailstock dies. I used a loose one to get them started and then a finishing one so to speak. But it came out nicely and I'm really taking my time with this. Actually it's getting kind of late here on it's Friday night so I think I'm going to pack it in for tonight. I don't want to mess this up after I've got it down. It's very it's very touchy with such a, a relatively long stick out as they say and a very thin diameter so I'm taking very very light cuts like five thousandths of an inch. Also I'm making good use of the little brass holder that I used when I made the pistons. I've got it oriented the same way and it's it's a good way to hold this uh, stainless steel in the three jaw so using that as well. So the next steps for this one this is just turned down exactly to an eighth of an inch now and I'll, I'll use the threading tool in the lathe Got this nifty little carbide one I think I got from Grizzly. And I'll just take little five thousandths of an inch cuts till I get it almost close and then follow up with the uh, tailstock die holder. I'll show you that as we go along. All right, here's the first pass. Just uh, gonna take about a five thou cut. Lathe set at 70 RPM. Waiting for the index thing to come around. Here we go. And then the scratch pass is a 40 thread per inch. The scratch pass is always the prettiest. What's nice about this one cutter is you can see I can get pretty close to the shoulder there. it, I back it out, bring it over back to the zero point, and just like a bomb except for a million times slower, <laughs> coming in and set it at zero again on the x-axis, zero, I'll leave it a little bit above zero on there. So there's the 40 thread print. You can see it's a very fine thread. Coat it down with a little cutting fluid. And I'll just do this again. I'll set for another on the on the angle. Set for another 5 thou cut on the angle. So it's less than 5 thou even. Um, and I'll just do this. I'll do this about four times. And then I'll bring you back and show you my little process that I've evolved for the stainless steel. This tough stainless steel and cutting it with the um, with threading dies. Okay, and here's the process for chasing. After three cuts with the threading tool, because of the, the long stick out and the propensity for the end part to waver, if you will, uh, what I've been doing is following up with uh, two threading dies. I've got this one set a little bit on the loose side and it's making the initial cut. I'm, I'm not, it's hard to run this. What I do, just to show you, I use the inching feature on the lathe and I just hold that by the vice grips and go bit by bit. And then I, I can back it up. I can use the reversing lever on the, on the lathe if I need to be backing it up. So I go about halfway down and then back up and then go complete the cut. And then I've got a second um, threading die. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, this is a good, it's, a, it's made by um, Ace Hardware, and it's made in Japan. It's a really good quality threading die. It's adjustable. And like I said, I've got it adjusted a little bit on the loose side. It has It's split, and it has a screw in it. Um, but anyway, you can see the nice, well, hopefully you can see that, the nice finish that I got so far. Sorry. I'm trying to get it good. It looks really nice, but I can get that even better by running it through a second threading die, so I'll show you that in just a second. Alright, there's the part coated down with some um, tap paste liquid, and here's the other, the second, this is a, a fixed threading die, if you can see this or not, it's a Hansen brand made in the USA, it's a tiny little thing, I can't even remember where I got this, but it uh, it's a fixed die, so I've got it in this little holder, and what I've been doing is starting here and just running it by hand at first, 
to make sure I have it set on there square. You can use if you want to. You can, you know, especially if you're if you're not just chasing an already established thread like this one's established and it's sorry sticking on there pretty well. So I'll start it by hand and <laughs> sorry about the camera work, y'all. I'm focusing more on what I'm doing. I'll I'll just finish talking and and shut it off and finish it. But what I do is I, I, I get it going and then uh, I can use that inching feature too and just gently move it by hand and, and th finish thread the rest of it. I'll bring you back when I've got that completed. Okay, here's the second operation. I, I just advanced this th threading die on the, on the part first by hand and then uh, first I actually put some tap paste on it, some nice cutting fluid, real thick. And then, and I can feel it's warm there. It it definitely cut a little bit. So like I said, the first one was set loose. This one is a fixed die. Let me show it to you in a second. It's um, it's a Hanson made in the USA 540 tapping die, uh, threading die. I'm not even sure where I got it actually, but as you can see, it's a really tiny size. It fits in this small size die holder. It's an octagonal one as well. Whoa, darn it. Of course, I would have to drop that. You can see, well, even before I drop it, it had um, some cut shavings on it. They're cutting. It, it definitely cuts. This is the, there you go, Hanson made in the USA, 540. Very high quality, octagonal little die. I must have got it at my favorite hardware store, I think. And there, let's see, there's, <laughs> it threw up some wires. So it definitely cut a little bit, um, made a little nicer finish. And now I've got a 540 nut here I can use to test and make sure. And it's a nice snug fit. It's just perfect. I mean, this is going to be great. The valve itself will be a little quarter piece of quarter inch brass that's going to be th uh, threaded, tapped this thread diameter or the thread dimension. And it'll be right, should be right in the middle there. So it should be just perfect for this application. So that's a big relief. Here you can see a little piece of brass there that's kind of a, acting as a collet for the stainless and I'm really glad I got these things made. This was the thing that I was least looking forward to because of the stainless steel. I don't know what grade it is. I got it off eBay in some small sections but it's not a grade I usually use. Um, usually get the easily machinable type then I order it from a, a metal dealer. This one I was trying to be cheap and I got some pieces that are definitely stainless they're not magnetic and they haven't rusted I think it's a, a pretty high grade but it's really hard to machine so glad I've got this behind me okay, a little progress update here are the two valve spindles that we just made and after I finished making those while well, I had the 540 threading stuff out I took a chunk of ordinary eighth inch steel rod and I threaded the ends 540 so I made some studs basically to go into the block, the cylinder block, and through the steam chest, and they're thick enough, as you can see, to cover the steam chest covers and be held down with some ordinary 540 nuts. Also, when I took these things off, I stamped them left and right, as you can see there, just to uh, make sure I don't, well, just to make it easier for reassembly. So the next step is going to be to take this piece of quarter inch brass, which I've just laid out these marks here. I'll cut it in the bandsaw, and this is enough to make the two um, valve nuts. And the second, so the marks you see here, it will be self-explanatory if you're building one, but it's a quarter inch thick here. And this mark here is the 332nd mark in from the end. Actually, that'll be from the bottom, and I'll I'll be drilling and tapping for 540 to accept these valve spindles, and then we'll have those things made. And we'll have to we've already identified them. I have to file out the valve slots a little bit, but that's no big deal. So I'll bring you back for the making of the valve nuts. All right, just about done making the nut. I cut the the brass like I talked about. And then I milled it square, quarter inch square, and I've drilled and tapped one of the 540 holes, and I'm drilling and ta or tapping the second one now using the bottoming tap. So take that out and deburr everything, 
and then um, cut it in half and I smooth the edges. I don't know if you could tell before you, yeah, I marked where the cut is. I know the, the width of my bandsaw blade and it's not a critical measurement in any way. So I'll cut that, smooth it, and we'll test fit them. Okay, working on the clevises now that will go on the ends of the steam chest valves. So you can see I'm doing them side by side. I got pieces of quarter inch steel here. And what I've already done, let's see if I can take these out without dropping them. Yeah. I took, the first thing I did was to square the ends off. There we go. And I drilled, <laughs> try to get some good light. There we go. All right, I drilled all the way through with them oriented this way in the vise side by side. I drilled all the way through with the number 38 drill, tapping size drill, an eighth inch in. And then I drilled a clearance drill, a number 30, halfway down. And then I tapped it, the 540, I tapped it, it threaded that it needed. And I did it for both of them, obviously. And then I put them side by side this way. And let's see. Yep, then just used an eighth inch, what the Brits call a slot drill, a two fluted end mill, which does work pretty well for creating a slot of all things. So I've got an eighth inch slot in there, just like it's called for. The main reason I bring this out is in the book, it's not obvious, but there's two different styles of clevises that go on the valve slide spindles. One is the quarter inch square like this for the, ex the type with the eccentrics. And the other one is a three-eighths by quarter inch. So luckily I had some quarter inch square stock. Next I'm going to saw them off on the bandsaw just a little past the half inch mark. And then I can put them in four, four, in the quarter inch square collets in the, in the lathe and drill and tap the back end and also um, make a little shoulder. I'll bring you back for that. All right, here's the two pieces cut off at a half inch, cleaned up in the bandsaw just a little bit. And I got one of them fitted in here in the uh, square 5C collet chuck. So I'll tighten that up and round the shoulder and drill and tap for 532nd 40. Okay, this will be the last segment of this week's video. Just wanted to show the finished product basically with the valve spindles made the little clevises here and um, it, it works nicely. I do think, I hate to say this, but I think I'm going to remake the valve spindles themselves. I just am not really happy with how they came out and I think what I'm going to do is make an order to McMaster Car and order some proper like 303 stainless steel in the 532nd diameter. Just so I can make them. I, one thing's for sure, I need to remake them because I made them slightly too short. Although there's enough throw there, you can see. I mean, you can. It'll expose both of the intakes. But I just I'm not happy with that. And I need to order some fasteners anyway. Like the stainless steel's a couple dollars. So all the segments that you've seen in this one, um, I'm going to redo those. I won't bore you with with showing that over again unless I come up with a better technique. But I'm going to redo the spindles anyway, but this is the, the finished product. It basically looks really nice. It looks like it's going to operate just fine. So I'm very happy about how they came out, except for the spindles themselves. So thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.